Okay, we're off the Valencia market. Maybe you know you can overlay the sound. Yeah. Like I... Feeding wing, you can overlay. Oh, uh, you may take it off. Yeah, right. you can take it off and you can talk. Okay. Overlay, there is overlay. Okay, we can show you how to do that. You obviously tell who the brains of the outfit is. It's sitting on the back of this throbbing Harley Davidson. Guys, when you uh, get a scooter over here, especially a big uh, American or something like that, uh, don't be tempted to go and buy some great thumping thing and bring it over to this country. Uh, one, you can't get them fixed, uh, unless you're real handy yourself, then you can't get the spare parts. And I was a little bit self-conscious because I'm 6'2", and I looked like a pimple on a pumpkin, but no one cares here. So, uh, you know, we've got 110 cc's, about 155 cc's, one, that's all that's really readily available, and two, um, you know, it doesn't cost you an arm and leg to run. Like a full tank of this thing, which will get me uh, through a week, cost me about 250 pesos, which uh, I suppose is around about four bucks. He's got to give way to us because he's a peddler and I'm a motorised thing. But uh, do you think he will? No. That's a local laundromat that's down there in the creek. I don't know if you saw it. A bit of construction going on. We're just coming up here on the left hand side is where my stepson uh, and Jen's son uh, goes to high school. Uh, we stop off on the left hand side. And so I'll just stop off here and have a look. Have a look at that for construction. It's rather impressive. We're still trying to work out what the bloody hell it is because there's no signs up but you know, it could be a mall, it could be, you know, who knows. No one seems to know. Everything's kept a secret here. The love of concrete. Anyway, right next door, because we thought at one stage of the game it was going to be an auditorium and a gymnasium, but it's just too big for that, is uh, Rubido School. That one there, which I think are around about 1,200 students go. Chuck a right turn, which will take us down into the main street of Valencia. There's no give way, give right, give left. It's just, you know, who can basically bully your way through. And when they see a, a western, they usually have a person to stop because they think we're arrogant enough to keep going. Wobble to our right as Jim will show you, is the wet market. You know, that's where the freshly slaughtered pigs and the fish come. And, 
it's a look, a lot of people gonna look at it and say, oh it's so dirty. Well that's what you get from the Philippines and most Southeast Asian countries. Not that dirty because what happens is the meat doesn't last too long. People swoop in and buy it up, especially pork. They know that it's killed in the morning. There's another reason though, they don't hang the meat, so you know like uh, it's not the most tender. Anyway, we'll go up here, we'll park the bike. That'll cost us probably to stay in the parking area about 10 pesos. We can stay there all day if you like. But that, we'll just pop off it. The uh, tenant will park it for us. And he'll look after... Uh, there we go, we're getting indicated. Look at this. This young man will take care of the bike for us. My fingers in the way. Okay. As we walk down, you know, you get everything. All this stuff comes from overseas. It's usually goodwill, uh, and somehow it makes its way to uh, private hands, and they they flog it off. So you can see. And most people actually buy it. Whoops. Now what's happening at the moment? You probably can't hear it. The national anthem's playing, which means that everyone stands up. And this is played at what time is it? About nine o'clock. Anyway, it's just over. And in the background you can hear the church bells because, you know, church Sunday and all that kind of thing. <clears throat> so, at least you've got variety here because being second-hand clothes, um, you know, you're never going to get a great rack of sh uh, shit in a row that everyone else is going to be wearing. Here's the local boys. Cycling's a big thing. And they'll get out and they'll cycle every day. People will go up. Oh, well, that's not clothes. And of course, everyone's having their morning teas and coffees and whatever, which is a bit of a ritual as well. I don't do it that often because, you know, like I like to spend my time at home doing this kind of stuff. So, anyway, we'll switch off and we'll, I'll get Jen to switch back on in a minute. I thought I'd lost a bit of course because you've got this, oh, we're, we're looking for the uh, magic underwear at the moment. Jen can't stay away from Uka Ukai. You know, um, as I said, she, she has a bit of a thing for clothes and she buys them and if she doesn't like them or she wears them for a couple of days then she puts it in her own or go to a store and then passes it on and we sell it again. She's very clever because she chooses well and uh, we usually sell a bit of a profit. Gives her an interest and a few bob in her pocket. But anyway, um, oh, she who sh shall be obeyed has, has indicated where we're going to go. And we'll go up into the market proper. This is where you get the produce from, the eggs. And... Oh, it's a pretty good market day today. Every man and his dog's out. A lot of Chinese vegetables, or what we'd know as Chinese vegetables here, and there's a lot of native vegetables. <laughs> And the little hairy fruit you can see is rambutan. It's a beautiful fruit. If you haven't tried it. And for all the Aussies, they'll know what they are. They're bloody chocos. Uh, I don't know what the hell they call them here, but I think every country place in Australia has chocos growing on the outhouse. Easy to grow. When you cook them, they take on the flavour of anything you cook them with and you'd be surprised that in the old days they used to mix it with apple and put it in apple pies because the vegetable actually takes on the flavour of the apple pie or the apples anyway. Rambutan again. And you've got banana hearts. They're found at the bottom of the banana stem or bunch and uh, they're, they're, they're cooked up and eaten uh, with various curries and chilies and and whatever. Uh, we've also got yep, honey, boiled honey. We'll come back and see this gentleman later. Actually, usually that shit they sell is a mixture of uh, sugar and you know two teaspoons of honey, so we don't actually buy there, but you don't embarrass them. 
There is a stall along here somewhere that does do natural honey. Ah, here we go. The honey stall. G'day. I get a decent size one, love. Because we'll, we'll... Which one? They have different colors. Us, these honey experts, which one's the, the best one is? This one. That one? Yeah, dark one. The dark honey? Okay, that looks all right. All right, grab one of those. Yeah. Okay, that's going to 250 pesos. You can do the conversion on your currency converter at home. Obviously, this honey stall is run by an expat and his wife. And these are the little businesses you get involved with here. Roses, flowers. Flowers, you get a lot of flowers here, especially roses. You wouldn't expect so, but, you know, the fellows love flowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep going. Okay, now we go over to the pet stand. You notice it. You can even buy, I think you saw these fighting fish and guppies and whatever. You sell those. The old traditional goldfish. Anyway, that's how they sell them here. Traditional breakfast at sticky rice and those green wrappers. And of course, we get them. Oh, Jen can't hang around. She's she's on a mission for something or other. Let me come up. These are brooms. Oh, what we'd know as brooms. Pretty flash brooms. They've got a metal metal ring on them. But uh, they're uh, some kind of grass that they all string together and they sweep the floors uh, with those. Very important in a uh, Filipino household. You know, if there's anyone that has anything to do with Filipinos will tell you they spend more time brushing you know, the, the front backyard in the house than they do anything else. Bananas, depending on where you are, will depend on the quality of bananas. Actually, in Minden now, the banana quality is excellent because there's a huge amount of banana farms down there. They've got the, what are they call Cavendish? Is that Cavendish bananas? Anyway, they grow those down there for export. Here, it's more like ladies' fingers and I don't know what the other variety is, but you're certainly not going to go without decent food. And of course, we've got the sweets and whatever the fellows make. And then, of course, the Christmas tree. You know, love Christmas here. This, this bloody thing's probably been up for two weeks. So, any celebration, they celebrate the arse out of. As I said, they're happy people. Now we're going to have the mango stand. Always intrigues me. There's bloody mango trees everywhere, but... Everyone seems to tend to want to buy them. Supposedly because uh, mango trees are rather dirty things, you know, as far as the leaves go in their swiftly sweep yard. So they have other people grow them in their yards and then uh, well, then we got corn with butter on it and that that shitty uh, flour they're throwing away, that chemically enhanced cheese flavour. It's probably terribly bad for you, but it tastes good. What are these? Uh, they're green mangoes, they make salad out of those. Not a bad, bad thing. Sweet potatoes, that's good. Actually getting a, a normal, what we call normal white man's potato. They're not of any great size, which makes me a pain in the ass to uh, peel, but that's about, if they get any bigger than that, you're paying fortune for them. Well, I can't do without me spud, so I pay the price. Okay, this is the type of thing you can buy here. You know, quesadillas and chicken tacos, they are influenced by the, the Spanish. So you get a lot of derivative Spanish stuff and whatever, and they set up their little stalls. And of course with the, the amount, oh, and then we've got another oh, the Ansel like this. Then we have Big Popper's Burgers. Yeah, we've got that, and uh, you can see it, you can see the prices. You know, the old burger, none of it's any good. It's got no beetroot on it and it's got no pineapple on it. So it's not worth two bob. And then we've got the German uh, sausage stand. You can, this German expat makes all these sausages at home and then sells them down the market. It's good quality sausage. But you can also buy one in a roll here. And uh, don't sit down ever. But knowing this, it really comes in handy because you know the quality of food's good if they make it at home. Then we got the bakery where you get baguettes and and uh, uh, little little bloody knick-knacky things. Then you got Korean food over here. 
we'll go around the back. And we got the inner side cooking, which is uh, usually chicken. You can do it with pork. It's done over coals. They call it inner side. And of course, their little uh, desserts, which I, they're a little bit sweet for me because the, the basis is condensed milk half the time. Uh, they like it sweet here or they like it salty. Um, it's two extremes. Um, and of course, what have we got over here? Greek yogurt, something like that. Oh, yes, yeah, Spanish omelettes. This lady prepares Spanish omelettes. It's a good brekkie meal. You can see the finished product over here. Eggs are cheap here because there's a million and one chickens. And the old pack lunch box. There's varying different types of food in here. And they sell it already pre-packaged. It's a breakfast type thing. It's cold, of course. You know, like, they eat everything bloody cold over here, but... And this, this is a type of Korean. Hello! I'll be back. The Korean balls. They're delicious, by the way. You know, so you get a cross-section of stuff here, a lot of Koreans. Uh, I don't know what the hell this is. I think he's uh, done for the day, he's probably sold out. Down here, some more water here, mini pancakes there. Now, as I said, they like the sweets. And this is relishes and pickles over here. Tried them, not all that fussed on the stuff. Maybe I just tried the wrong, the wrong one, but I'm a bit of a pickles and relish nut. You know, mum used to make it as most Australian mums used to. Bottle it up, I don't particularly like it. This guy here produces some fantastic, he's a, he's a baker from Europe somewhere, I think he's German. But a lot of his stuff is absolutely good. Great, I buy quite often from here. The quesadilla stand where they make quesadillas and you can you know, put the old staples in, chicken and God knows what. The cheese is, I don't know what the bloody hell I make the cheese out of it, but I don't think it's seen, we've seen any cow's milk. But uh, it certainly doesn't melt in the heat and go off. You can, you can, buy, you can buy cheese here in the last you know, one of those shelf cheeses, and uh, it'll last God knows how long. Oh, here we go, a jumbo pow. That's a steamed, uh, I suppose you could say, uh, oh, I'm lost for words anyway. It's like a steamed dough and inside of it there is this concoction. Good, good. Yeah, good. It's very nice anyway, the show pal. That's about it. I'm getting too hot to do this any longer, so. That's the Valencia Markets. I'll have a bite to eat in a minute and find Jen, which will be a task unto itself. As you can appreciate, you lose your wife in this crowd. Unlike in Europe where you can look for someone tall or blonde or red-headed or whatever. But here, where they're all a standard size and they're all brunettes. Thank Christ I'm 6'2", so she usually looks for me rather than, and finds me long before I find her. So anyway, that's it. Valencia Markets. I'll sign off now. I don't know how long this video was and I'll probably cut it up, but subscribe, comment, listen, share. Jen's cracking up about... Uh, uh, the subscription's slowing down, so she wants everyone to share it. So if you know anyone that'd be interested, get, in, get onto your list of people. Oh, balloons! Darling, if I was if I was four, I would have a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it from uh, Phil and Jen in the Philippines for another vlog. And we will catch up to you all later.